what are the criteria of the CVCT scan you're going to be using? And this is what we're going to, you know, pay a little bit more attention to. Do all CVCT scans work? And the answer is no. We actually have certain criteria that we need to check in a CVCT for us to actually be able to use this CVCT. Number one will be acquisition date, FOV, motion artifacts, metal scatter, and beam hardening. Essentially, these are the five things that we need to check before going on and, and using a CBCT for the process of treatment planning uh, and implant. So let's talk a little bit more in detail about each and every one of those five criteria for the CBCT. Number one will be the acquisition date. It is recommended that the CBCT use is recent and not older than six months. So this is the recommendation and the reason why it should not be older than six months or it's not advised to be older than six months is because changes in the patient's oral environment could take place and render the treatment planning process inaccurate. Remember that the oral cavity is a very dynamic environment and a lot of changes can really happen very, very quickly. So what we need to have is we need to have the most recent CBCT so that really accurately represents what is happening in the patient's mouth at the moment. Field of view. Now in the picture that we have in front of us we have multiple sizes of CBCTs. So which one is really the one that you need to use for guided surgery? Number A is a full face CBCT. B is a full maxilla and mandible CBCT, so it's a dual arch CBCT. C is a quadrant CBCT and D is a full arch mandible uh, CBCT. Well, if you're planning on doing guided surgery, the minimum requirement will be D. So ideally what we need to have is we need to have all the structures visible in the arch that we're going to be placing the implants in. That includes the nerve canal, mental foramen, other side of the teeth because we're going to be using that for matching and I'll talk more about this later on. If you're going to be doing freehand surgery, C is definitely enough. If you're going to be doing a full upper and lower uh, implant placement, number B is what you need and number A, we don't really need it for only guided surgery purposes. We need it for maybe a digital oral design which is another topic we've spoken about in a previous episode in the previous video. So in essence, for guided surgery, what do you need? You need a CBCT that basically captures all the different anatomical structures in the arch that you're going to be placing the implants in, and we definitely do not recommend using a quadrant CBCT for guided surgery. What about motion artifacts? What are motion artifacts? Remember that when we take the CBCT, it actually takes quite some time for the CBCT image to be acquired. In that time, during the acquisition, the patient might move slightly and that results in what we call motion artifacts. So if you have motion artifacts, ideally do not use that CBCT and take another CBCT that has no motion artifact in it. So, where do you exactly check for a motion artifact? In some cases, it's quite obvious. So you can see here that there's doubling in the teeth. In some cases, in the mandible, for instance, what I recommend is looking at the buccal side of the mandible and where right now you can see a doubling of the cortical plate of the body of the mandible. And this is how you know that this is a motion artifact. What about the maxilla? In the maxilla, usually look also for cortical plates. So for instance, look at the anterior wall of the sinus, the posterior wall of the sinus, and the floor of the sinus as well. If you have this doubling, it means that this is an image with motion artifacts and it's not recommended to use this image. Again, also in the teeth, it might look something like this. So make sure that you check the CBCT before your patient leaves the office and make sure that it's free of motion. Again, you would like to have the most accurate treatment planning and that is only possible if you have a CBCT that is free of motion artifacts. Uh, number four would be a metal scatter or artifacts. So metal scatter is basically this artifact that we see right here when our patients have metal into their mouths. So what happens is when the beams of the x-ray hit 
a very dense structure. It causes these artifacts or the scattering artifacts, and it really causes our image not to look very pretty, as you can see here, and it really reduces the quality, the information that we can gather out of the CBCT. More recent CBCT scanning machines have what we call noise reduction technology or scatter reduction technology or scatter reduction algorithms. So they move images from being, you know, these images like this image on the left side to a slightly better image, which is the image on the right side. So we need to really be aware of these artifacts, these scatter artifacts. And in my presentation today, I'll talk to you about novel approaches and methods that we have in order for us to overcome these images and still be able to treatment plan and match uh, our case. So this is how metal scatter usually looks like. And all of us are pretty much familiar with this. And again, we'll talk about this in more detail today. Uh, last thing I would like to speak to you about is beam hardening effect. And beam hardening effect is a very important artifact that we need to know about. I can't tell you how many implants have been falsely extracted because people don't really know much about beam hardening. So what is beam hardening? Well, beam hardening just in essence is if we have a very dense object in the CVCT, what we will find is that you will find dark streaks or dark lines around this very dense object. And this is what we call beam hardening effect. And you can see it from this image right here. And this is how originally the image should look like. Same thing here. These are the uh, beam hardening effect. Same thing here and same thing here as well. So how does that really affect us in implantology and how does that relate to implants? Well, let's take a look at the image on the left side. The two posterior implants, if you look at between the two implants, you'll find that it's you know quite pitch black. It's black, you know, usually if someone does not have a lot of experience or does not know what beam hardening effect is, he'll essentially say that I can see that there's a lot of bone loss between the two implants. But if we take a periapical x-ray of the same case and the same patient, and you'll find that right now in between the implants, you know, obviously there is no loss of bone whatsoever in this case. And what that tells you is in order for us to follow up on implants, it's always advised to follow up on implants using periapical x-ray rather than CBCTs due to the fact that we might have what we call the beam hardening effect. So if you ever see a CBCT that looks like this and you're wondering if there's any sort of bone loss around your implant, always verify using a periapical x-ray. 